Hi, I'm Jim Erickson, Editorial Director at Information Management Magazine. I'm out here in San Diego at the Data Warehousing Institute Conference. Uh, it's a three-day event with lots of instruction courses and a nice executive summit talking about a lot of real-world use cases of what we're talking about around Agile BI. And it's a concept of being, it's kind of flexibility and time to market and getting away from some of the monolithic uh, projects that we're all pretty familiar with in a in an in a environment where business has to transform and and change itself very rapidly, and the IT uh, environment has to be responsive with that. I'm with Mark Madsen, who is a research analyst, a good friend, a great resource in our industry. He runs an outfit called Third Nature up there in Oregon. Is that right? That's and right. We got you all the way down here. Mark, it's great to, to talk to you. You what what are you doing here at the conference this time around and how are you looking at this the, this agile where it's at now compared to maybe a year ago? Well, uh, I'm here for a couple of different topics, mm -hmm. uh, one of which is re-architecting BI and data warehousing to take advantage of the new things that are out there. Mm -hmm. And a big piece of that is that you can change the technology, but you have to change the methodology that goes with it. Right. And so there's an agile component to that mm -hmm. in terms of either things that you build or the methods you use to build them. Okay. So when you say there's a methodology, is that specific to the technology, specific to the, the development? What, 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 what's the scope of that? Well, every domain you know, has a methodology. Sure. So if we take where BI came from and got kind of... Uh, articulated as a methodology, you had a bottom-up model, you know, Bill Inman and the sort of data-driven model, and mm -hmm. you had uh, Ralph Kimball promoting that sort of uh, top-down model. They still search those names and, on our website. And, <laughs> you know, every day. Those are methodologies, yep, right? They, right? They say, well, you start here and you work down based on usage, so it's a usage modeling concept, yeah, or sure. you start here and you work up and it's a content modeling concept. And you just sort of pass each other like chips in the night if you yeah. use both. Yeah. But, you know, the, the idea is that uh, those are methodologies that are in place, and they make a lot of assumptions. Mm -hmm. They make assumptions about the existence of knowledge and information, and that you can know everything up front. Mm. Because right. each one of those says, get data requirements or get usage requirements, and model and build and construct things. And so the methodology is constructed in a way that doesn't adjust well to very rapid cycling except within components. Right. And I, I think, you know, when we talk about adoption of new methods, we run into other problems because of the linkage between a methodology and the thing you're building. Ex no, exactly right. And, you know, I think of it in a context also of, a, you know, a lot of companies are undergoing kind of a social transformation where a lot of managers have sort of created their own jobs on the fly and they keep a lot of balls in the air. Maybe it's akin to executing a methodology. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, organizations are demanding that we're a lot more collaborative and a lot more socially focused, yeah. right? And this is the same kind of, I think, environment that, that Agile is, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the organizational aspect is interesting too because organization and methodology and architecture or technology are all linked. Mm -hmm. And they're like three legs on a three-legged stool. And organization, architecture, technology. Organization, the um, you know the organization, how you you construct people, methodology. Oh, methodology. And, okay, sure. And technology or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. architecture. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know the methodology dictates how you go about building something, mm -hmm. but that assumes that you're building this particular thing. Right. And the, this particular thing <laughs> that you're building in right. both of the methodologies we just mentioned is a data warehouse, which is assumed to be fully centralized physically instantiated and constructed with a layered architecture. Mm -hmm. right? You have sources, data integration, a database, some sort of semantic layer, and then usage on top of that. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little wedding cake. But the problem is that that means that you have to stratify the people, right? ETL people do ETL. Right. BI people do BI, DI people, you know, it just, at each layer, people have their expertise. And then you want to go come along with some agile methodology that says, well, we need some new data, which needs to be incorporated in a data model, which means it needs to be populated, after which we need to explore it and then model it in the BI tool to produce the reports mm -hmm. to get it out. <laughs> yeah. So you've got organizational structures mm -hmm. and the methodology and the architecture all reinforcing each other. And if you just yank the methodology piece out and say, we're capital A agile, but you haven't changed the jobs that people have, 
you're, you're not constructing an organization properly to support it, and you're assuming that the thing that you built and the technology that you used to build it allows for the kind of cycling and change that the methodology wants to achieve. Right, exactly. Well, if you're not changing the roles of people, uh, and you don't have that kind of flexibility. You know, we, we, see, we see the technology answer and people are building tools. Well, we can do ETL and modeling and visualization, all these things at once, but the people aren't all the same yeah. people at once, right? So is that what we're aiming for? Are we trying to make people more, you know, versatile, more, well, wear I think, more hats or what? I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, people have these goals when they say we want to be agile, but yeah. what they're really saying is we want to speed up deployments because they're too darn slow yeah. Yeah. or they're saying that you know we have things out here but in the case of of the departments you know when i was a bi manager departments would call up and say we want x mm -hmm. and we need it in the next four weeks because that's our program timeline yeah and then that x would assume okay you know we can get in there and do it gather you know the minimal requirements and do the agile let's just do some prototyping but to actually get it through and into production, you have to build ETL, design a data model, source the data, clean it up, make sure it conforms to everything yeah. else in your data warehouse, mm -hmm. make sure it fits into a metadata model, and deliver the reports by which time their data is three months past. Right. So you know, they want speed and cycling and, and agility, but part of it, too, personally, I think, is that yeah, you have to change all three legs of the stool. You've got to change people's jobs and roles. You have to change how they're approaching the work. And you have to look at these new products you're saying that, that could do multiple layers of the stack. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you violate the stack architecture, you then change the person's job, mm -hmm. which changes how they do their job. Mm -hmm. So um, part of it is going back to the first level assumptions. What are we building? And is that model, which we actually instantiated as a formal architecture circa 1988, the right thing to do today? Mm -hmm. And I don't think it is. I think that there are differences in what's possible and in the, the software architectures that are changing, which is forcing the model changes and you know the requirements being imposed on the organization, the methodology, and the architecture. Yeah, yeah. And in the organization, let's even go to the individual because I think there is there's such a shortage of talent in, in some of these areas. Mm -hmm. Companies are... You know, at a time when people are worried about jobs and careers, I mean, there are so many opportunities, it seems like, in our business. Um, I, you know, I guess I'm trying to look forward to what you see down the, down the road. What's going to emerge out of this? Is it going to be just sort of a new kind of environment? Or just sort of, are we really going to push the I away from the T and put the B mm -hmm. and the T both around the I? I mean, how, it, it, that's kind of what something we're kind of moving yeah. to. At information management, where we're talking about information enablement and then business enablement, you know. So, crystal ball. Yeah, it's a good. Uh, it's a good question because um, the tools change the job, the methodology changes the job, the job defines the tools and methodologies. You know, where do you start? <laughs> and and you you kind of have to step back and break the problem down. And and part of it, I think, fundamentally, the, is why this agile stuff is hard is that there's two different pieces. There's infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Data infrastructure for getting, moving, cleaning up, making available. Irrespective of how it's consumed, used, and delivered. Right. And that piece on the front runs at a much rapid, more rapid cycle yep. and often has needs like we've got this little bit of information we need coupled with everything else we already have. Right. And how you cycle those things, which are more at a consumption layer, versus the infrastructure layer. Right. It's kind of like the evolution of an electric grid where power generation and central power is over here and you have to get that power to your factory and do you run a cable or do you lay a bunch of power yeah. lines and transformers yeah. that deliver it to holes in the wall that you stick something in. <laughs> no, right. And, and you've got, I mean, another way to look at it is you've got the, the wood shop in the back of the building and it's mm -hmm. populated with a certain set of tools in your infrastructure, right? Yeah. And you've got craftsmen that can use those tools to make different things, right? Yeah. So uh, I don't know that that's a fair analogy to what we're facing now when a business suddenly wants to incorporate their marketing campaign into social mm -hmm. media and so forth and things like that. That kind of right. responsiveness is not necessarily in the wood shop. Data responsiveness that persists this stuff mm -hmm. versus consumption responsiveness, which transforms it and uses it in different ways. I think they're two different things, and I think we need to start thinking about 
infrastructure and the way we think about water and electricity and so yeah. forth and yeah. has a slower time cycle and maybe isn't agile. Mm -hmm. It is the enabler yeah. for agility, which sits on top of that. And I think that's where we're getting to. And that's, well, that's the way it always is. It's always receding. Infrastructure is always moving back. The yeah. dial tone is always getting closer to the combination of things we used, activities we used to do. So I think that's, that's just kind of baked in. You know, it's going to take time. I, I guess if it is good news, it's probably that it seems a lot more people are really trying to, well, they had to. They had to shake those old models and those old right. constructions and those old job roles, right? So mm -hmm. uh, I think we're, we're, we're you know, we're, we're still working our way through and we have a long way to go. But um, it's very, very interesting to, to meet some of the minds out here and hear some of the, you know, the leadership stories and the, and the innovation stories. It's tough to innovate, <laughs> but it's... You know, we're getting a lot of good stuff out of here. So, uh, Mark Madsen, um, great resource to the industry, great resource to TDWI and to folks who follow data management, business intelligence, and a lot even more esoteric things. I think you've been blogging about some interesting subjects lately at uh, at your blog. So, <laughs> I encourage you to follow thirdnature.com. Yeah. Okay. Mark Madsen of Third Nature. I'm Jim Erickson with Information Management Magazine. Thanks so much. Have a great day.